How's it going everyone, it's me Vivi, and welcome to another video where I talk about Spyro Reignited Trilogy. So for this one, I thought of coming up with a list of 10 things, call it changes or additions, which could potentially happen in this trilogy. Seeing as how Crash Bandicoot Dancing Trilogy was handled, in terms of time relics added in each game, the save system, the HUD, you understand what I mean, right? I feel like Toys for Bob will take a similar approach when it comes to updating the game. Now what you're about to hear is a list of what I think think would make the trilogy even better. I don't expect all of you to agree with the whole list, not at all. And by the way, this list has no particular order, it's not like a top 10, which one's most important, which one isn't, no, it's just a list. Oh, and before I forget, if you do disagree with some stuff mentioned, explain why, tell me what works, what doesn't work, alright? So with that being said, let's get started. So let's start with this one, add skill points in Spyro. Row 1. Very easy. 2 and 3 had them, right? I don't see why they would miss out on the opportunity to add skill points in the original game. If they do so, they could add one in each level. The second game had 16, and the third one had 20. They could even add more for the other games, why not? A lot more replay value if they do so. And these skill points, they're most likely going to be part of a trophy achievement. Ratchet and Clank, the future saga, and onward, they never had trophies for gaining skill points. But as for the HD collection, they did add trophies for obtaining all skill points. And this whole thing with skill points, it was something by Insomnia Games, right? So since we're talking about Toys for Bob, I think it'd be cool to have trophy achievements for the skill points. And by obtaining all skill points, just like 2 and 3, we could unlock a nice epilogue for Spyro 1. What do you think? Next, Infinite Super Flame award upon 100% completion for all three games. Now all three games had a Super Flame, but the second one allowed you to get permanent Super Flame at Dragon Shores upon 100% completion. Once you get the flame, you save and quit. You create a new file and boom, you start the game with permanent Super Flame. One thing I never understood, was that some sort of glitch or was it intentional? Can someone please make this clear for me? I guess it could be considered a cheat, like it was intentional. Oh, and by the way, talking about this permanent Super Flame, there was even an early exploit. Are they gonna remove that one? I mean, you're pretty much breaking the game by doing that, so maybe? However, 1 and 3 were not designed to have infinite super flame, right? If they do add this reward, let's call it that, could they add a new game plus mode to compensate the difficulty? I mean, you're gonna restart the game with Super Flame, it's gonna be easier, right? Why not create a new game mode? Something similar to Ratchet and Clank, which they called Challenge Mode, remember? Make the enemy stronger. As for Spyro 1, Spyro was kissed by a special fairy at high caves and haunted towers. So how will he obtain that ability? Well, reward. Could Spyro meet this fairy again behind that new door they added in Artisans? What is behind that door? Oh, and Super Flame, by the way, it lacked a time bar in the first game. Will they add it despite the flashing, pretty much indicating its status? I think it'd be cool. And the flames, comparing him in the first one, it was white hot, as opposed to the fireball in the later games. So I'm thinking maybe they might make him all consistent. Fireballs? For three games? Anyone? Next, removed content. Two things I can think of. The unused area in Dino Mines and Midnight Mountain's missing whirlwind. What happened, by the way? According to senior artist Craig Stitt, he went on vacation, he was the one who designed it, and he came back and was suddenly removed for unknown reasons. They left the pillar and the lives. That's the funny thing. You can find a video of someone while a hacker modder who goes by the name Climbing Company. Who restored it? Now for an actual level, a lot of people have been bringing up aquifiers. There's this DeviantArt post. In January 2015, someone was given a press kit overview and features. Well, not given, someone sent it to them. It's the legit press kit. There was supposed to be a water environment. And on top of that, there was supposed to be swimming in the original game. Someone recently messaged Craig, and yes, he confirmed that there was supposed to be swimming in Spyro the Dragon. Since they got rid of it, they decided to make the waters dangerous. So I'm thinking, what if as a reward, Spyro can no longer take damage when falling into water? When do we receive this reward? Around the ending of the game. And could we learn this new ability or reward, whatever you want to call it, behind the new door in Artisans? You see what I'm doing right now? Anything could be behind that door, or who knows, that door could just be decoration. 
really. Now this aquifers I'm talking about is a homeworld, right? Would they go to lengths of adding an actual new homeworld? And the swimming part though, they took it out. It's not part of the first game. It'd be weird to suddenly be able to swim in this new homeworld. Unless of course they make it so Spyro learns how to swim in that homeworld. What do you guys think? What would you say? And as for sound effects and more dialogue, you can find a bunch of deleted content over on wiki. I'll leave the links in the description below. Next, very simple, something very similar to the Insane Trilogy, online leaderboards. What else am I gonna say? Flight levels and skateboarding in 3. Just like time trials in NST, they can do it. You know, to add some extra competitive flair. That is all. Next, Spyro's roll or dodge roll, whatever you want to call it. This was only present in the first game. It later got removed for some unknown reasons. Some found it useless, others actually used it against the dogs, mostly. Why was it removed? My theory is, L1 and R1 were used to center the camera and position Spyro in 2 and 3. Now in the original game, L1 and R1 were used to roll, so instead of rolling they replaced those functions, well the functions of the buttons, to fix the camera. And now since controlling the camera has moved to the right analog stick, L1 and R1, I'm guessing they could bring back the roll ability. Next, Sparks' abilities in all three games. Now this one maybe some of you might disagree on, okay? Completing Sparks missions in the third game granted Sparks upgrades, such as extra hit point, he would turn red, gem finder, which a lot of people found very useful, the warp function, warping to levels via the menu, and the ability to collect gems from treasure chests. Now guys, these are rewards. I'm not saying these should be unlockable, well, obtainable early on in the game, no, because I know it'll make the game perhaps too easy. So I'm thinking make it as a reward during the ending of the game. As for Gem Finder, it was an actual unlockable in the third game, an upgrade. As for the second game, it was considered a cheat code, pressing all shoulder buttons together. R1, L1, L2, R2. So will they leave it like that as a cheat code? In talking about cheat codes, will they leave all of the cheat codes? Big head, green spyro, and all that kind of stuff? I'm gonna say yes. And if they do add a new game plus mode, they make the enemy stronger, but you carry over all of Sparks' abilities. Next, this one is pretty simple, nothing much to it. Spyro 1 having health bars for the bosses. If they do so, it'll make it feel more like a boss battle. Add a health bar and make it perhaps unique for each one. What do you think? Spyro 1 didn't have that arena feel like 2 and 3. You would just chase them, fire, and beating each boss in 2 and 3 would let you move on to the next homeworld. The first game, you simply had to collect. Next, an unlockable skin. Will it be Cinder? Cinder, I'd say, is pretty popular, okay? Legend of Spyro and, of course, Skylanders. And don't forget, I'm talking about just a simple skin. No plot relevance. Like Coco and NST. Just a different skin. Just for fun. If they do add Cinder, let's say, how will we be able to access her? Will it be via the menu or behind that red door in Artisans? Or will they choose to go with the Ancient Trilogy route where you switch between characters via button prompts? Let's move on. You know what would add even more life to these games? Cutscenes for bosses. Especially the first game and the third game, The Sorceress. One easy way to add so much more is by adding some extra scenes. For example, Nasty Nork and, like I just said, The Sorceress from the third game. I mean, Spyro beat for example, Nasty Nork, and that's it. You finished the game. Toys for Bob said something about recreated cinematics. Are they considering adding new scenes? Is that part of the deal? I mean, Spyro came all this way to stop Nasty Nork. I mean, you could at least add a nice cutscene before the battle. Next, this one I'm pretty sure will happen. A unified system. Three things. The Atlas from the third game, the menu, and the save system. I'm expecting each menu from all games to look the same, just like what they did to Crash Bandicoot. Spyro 1 didn't have a guidebook or atlas. You had an inventory option, and no save option. You had to manually save your game by stepping on a platform after rescuing a dragon. 2 and 3 had save in the menu, and Zoe was introduced. You see this fairy in each level to save your progress, which I believe was much simpler, and reminded you that you had to save, that you could save. Spyro 1 may be because of those platforms you forgot to save, I'm sure it happened to a few of you. So I think updating the save, just like 2 and 3, would be pretty neat. And talking about a unified system, why not make all of the gems look 
look similar, no problem with that. So in summary, make the save systems just like 2 and 3, and for all 3 games add, I'd say, Atlas. I know I said 10, but here's 2 extras I'd like to add. The Japanese version of Spyro 1 and 2 had the Dragonfly eggs. By collecting those, you would unlock games on Pocket Station, which was this monochrome LCD screen device, which would get connected through memory card slots you would unlock Sparks minigames. Now we're in 2018, so if they do add extra collectibles, such as those dragonfly eggs, I'm thinking they're gonna make it a trophy achievement. Or maybe there's something else attached to it. Who knows what Toys for Bob is thinking right now. I mean, more collectibles, why not? Spyro is about exploring, so there you go. Dragon eggs. Before entering Magic Crafters, you would already collect them all, halfway through the game. Why not add more? Would you agree or disagree? In talking about these dragon eggs, we didn't have Blue Thieves in Spyro 2. In other words, we didn't have Dragon Eggs in the second game. So what would you say about having Dragon Eggs in the second game as well? 1 and 3 had them, so why not the second one? Alright, so with that being said, this is it for, I guess, my wish list, you want to call it? So, yeah. As usual, do your stuff. If you have any sorts of questions, leave everything in the comment section below. And as always, I've been Vivi, and thank you so much for watching.